All right, Coach, let's talk Jordan Dingle. You know, you've been very complimentary of him this year. The other facets of his game he maybe didn't have to do a year ago. But let's face it, his calling card is putting the ball in the bucket, and he's starting to do that big time now. I mean, if Dingle is this the rest of the way, what does it do to your ceiling? Yeah, you know, I, I, we always knew he could score, but what he's doing better right now is reading screens, moving without the basketball and feeding off of DJ, which he's never had a point guard like DJ before, so he, he knows now how to get his shot off of him. Mm -hmm. Then he's playing better defense, and then, it, you know, he has a negative assist turnover ratio at Penn for his career. Yeah, yeah. The other yep. night, six turnovers, uh, six uh, assists, no turnovers. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he's becoming a, an all-around basketball player, mm -hmm. not just a scorer, but he is scoring, and we need that. And he's starting to look for his now, and that's part of the mindset. Don't count the misses, you always say, right? Exactly. Okay. So I don't know if this is just a coincidence. We, we talked a lot about Soriano early when he was great, and then he dipped a little bit. We talked about that a lot midseason. And he stabilized a little bit, not as much involved offensively. Is that a change in philosophy, or have you tweaked that? You know, I, I always say this. If, if you want to be a scorer and it's not your shot, go get the ball in the glass. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one thing. Second thing is, when I, when I was assistant coach with, with one of the best scorers in the game, Bernard King, and he posted up, everybody threw him the ball. Yep. He demanded the basketball with his box-out presence. So he's got to demand the ball more. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to go to him two or three times more per half. Okay. So run the floor, get it in transition, get it off the offensive glass, command the basketball more, and then he'll probably get six or eight more points a game rather than eight or ten. He'll get 16 points a game. Yeah, which is probably where he should be. Right. 14, 16 yeah. points, getting 10 rebounds is great. Glenn Taylor, a little quiet against the Paul statistically, but since you put him in a starting lineup, you know, he's been banging in some frees. He's playing defense without fouling, which is something you've talked about all year. What has he done? What has he brought to the table last month? Well, he's doing more things. He's an athlete that was playing like a non-athlete. Mm -hmm. and, and I told him, I said, Glenn, you got to drive more, jump better. You've got to run better. And he responded and has done a good job. Now, last game, he had two early fouls, never got in the, in the groove. Um, RJ did. So it, it was um, okay. He's, he's given us what we need to have. Let's get to Wiltshire, who is beginning to show the signs of everything that you've said that's coming. He's starting to put the ball in the hole with great efficiency as well. That jump shot's looking pretty pure. And you've talked about it, Louisville, Siva, and, and others along the way that didn't start right away and then they became stars. And he's on that trajectory. I, I don't know if I've ever asked you a player comp. Is there somebody, not necessarily that you even coached, when you look at Wiltshire's game now that you see him maybe growing into similar? Anybody jump out? No, not really because where most freshmen suffer is off the ball defense. They relax, they take a blow. Uh, on the ball, they're okay. Uh, he's got to get stronger, physically stronger. Um, but he has much more potential than uh, Peyton Siva or Russ Smith. And, and look, Russ was a two time All American. Yeah. When I say that, Russ was a fabulous scorer. He just has, he's six foot three. Yep in shoes that Russ was six feet. Mm -hmm. So he has, he's long, he's athletic, plays above the rim. Those guys were, were different type of basketball players. Sim, in order for him to reach his potential, he's got to learn to play better defense. He's got to learn to move without the basketball as well as with the basketball. But outside of Jordan Dingle, he's the best shooter on the team. Wow. Yeah, wow. beautiful arc, yeah. great looking stroke, mm -hmm. knows the game. You know, his biggest critic, it's not me. I love him. Is it love his oh, the person in the mirror. That's great. He just he just unfortunately beats himself up too much. If he makes a mistake, he, sometimes he's gonna bang his head. And think he's gonna get a, I think he's gonna have a concussion. <laughs> you know, but he's a terrific young man. Yeah, I know you. you know, this him. is the last regular season game. I've always had problems with every team I've coached with one or two guys. I had to counsel them. I had to lift them up. I had to knock them down a little bit because they were in a little bit of trouble off the court, a little bit of trouble on the court. This group, every hotel, all the people say, what gentlemen? Yep. Every flight we take, they, the people working on the flight say, what gentlemen? It's incredible, top to bottom. The parents of these guys have done an incredible job raising these young men. That's awesome. I, I didn't have to do anything with them off the court, mm -hmm. except um, leave your phones in your room <laughs> when we have a yeah, meeting, yeah. things like that. Put the game down, put the yeah, console yeah, down, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Okay, so, you know, we talk about things that are, that are obviously tangible and identifiable through stats. The one thing that's a little less easier to quantify is confidence. 
What does it mean for you to see this group playing with confidence now? Well, you want to you make, make it happen in March, certainly. And we've got, right now, we're playing at a high level offensively. You know, when you get 19, 24 assists, but then turn it around and only turn it over three, six, and six, mm -hmm. that's incredible. Now, defensively, we're nowhere near where we need to be. But in the first year, it's so difficult. You're teaching them three different presses. You're teaching them a zone. You're teaching them man. They've never been together. They don't know how to cover for each other. Forgetting, um, it's it's if I'm guarding you, mm -hmm. we've got I've, somebody's got to have my back on every from the wing. They got to have my back at the, in the arc. They got to have my back. There's got to be a goalkeeper at all times in that lane helping us. And we're not at that point yet. But offensively, we're a pretty good basketball team. You are, and defensively compared to Michigan to where you are now, night and day. Yes, yes. And you know, I look. I've never had a first year team that was great mm -hmm. because they have to learn all these things. But I've got to become better at this game because I may not have seven, eight guys back every year. Yeah. Got it. So I, I have a total, now that I've been in it for a year and we understand this culture of what it is, the summer not necessarily has to be for development, individual I, development, your jump shot, your game. Sure. It's going to have to be more team. Okay. So this is interesting to me. We've gotten into metrics so far this year, and I know you're on top of it. During the DePaul game, for example, you're up 41. You know they're a, a bad team. You jumped, you snatched their soul early. You did what you had to do. But winning by big margins matter. How are you juggling that during a game? I told them in a timeout. I said, pay, attention, pay no attention to the score. We're playing everybody, but you must keep that over 40. It cost us about six points in the net. Really? And six points in Pomeroy, yes. We would have been about 28 or 29. Wow. Instead, now we go back from 34 to 36 because we didn't win by. Now, do I like that? No. No, no, no. Absolutely not. You like to play everybody. You like to have good sportsmanship. But in the EuroLeague yep. overseas, you always take the last shot. You go for two points at the end. You never let the clock run you out. Don't take the turn. They around. have a point system oh, there uh -huh. for the playoffs. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, so... I do think it, at, at this point, and I think you just alluded to this, you, you guys are a bit more of an offensive team at this point than defensive. But do you think that, and I'll use Seton Hall as a good example since they're a tough, defensive, gritty team, low scoring, are you fully equipped to play that 53-52 game, grind out, and win if you have to? Are you there yet? We're not as good as Seton Hall defensively. Mm -hmm. They have an edge on us with time, experience, players coming back. Um, where every bit is good offensively. Oh yeah. And, but when we play them, it's like when my Louisville team, the best team in the country that year, when we won the championship in 13 was Wichita State defensively. Yeah, they were really good, I remember we had, well. And they had three pros. Teams. Yeah. We had to play them in the second, uh, the first game of the final four. And I told our guys, very similar to Seton Hall, we're not as good as them defensively. Now we were a much better defensive team than we are here. Mm -hmm. I said, but if we're not as good, match them, Person for person, on defense, team-wise, individually, Wichita State is going to play Michigan in the final game because that's what I thought was going to win. Yeah, We were every bit as good that night as Wichita State. That'll be the same speech with Seton Hall. If okay. we are not as good defensively, team-wise, man for man, as Seton Hall, then we won't advance. Okay. Uh, one or two more for you here. So I think this is a great test coming up this weekend. You've talked about the attendance, building the brand. We all know what that is and it's in its infancy, we get that. About, a, about 11 or 12,000, you know, seasoned, you know, all in fan base that's going no matter what. And Georgetown's not bringing any fans. I think that this is a good litmus test to see, you know, what, what, what New York basketball fans jump in. Ah, oh, the Johnnies are hot, ah, oh, Johnnies are one four straight, ah, oh, the East tournament coming up. Would you expect a little bump at the garden this weekend? Not only that, I expect more enthusiasm, mm -hmm. just like the Creighton game. Because look, it, it doesn't matter whether it's 11,000 or 14,000. Just bring it, the team, just bring it. Because if we lose to Georgetown, we gotta win the tournament to go to NCAA. Yeah. So we all know that the next game is the biggest game. Is Georgetown capable of beating us without question? They scored 95 points against Xavier. They scored, I think, uh, 87 against us. Offensively, they can score the basketball. So we, if, if we don't bring, they had Providence beat, at Providence, I remember that. had it beat. I remember. So if we don't bring it and play great, if we're looking ahead, we have no chance to play in the NCAA tournament. Now that's not going to happen by us. Mm -hmm. The fans have got to come with the mentality. Every possession, we got to be there. So whether it's 11,000, 13,000, whatever number it may be, just come. Bring your game. We got to bring our game. I love it. All right, final thing, absolutely here. 
So still to be determined, we're taping this right now, this weekend, Hoyas, L let's just assume it works favorably for you. Are you an NCAA tournament team with the win against Georgetown? What do you think you need to do moving forward? We need to, to win. We, we need to win one tournament game. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we can't. It all, it all depends what the other teams do who are on the yep, bubble. Yep. We could would beat Georgetown and play the first round and still get in mm -hmm. if some of the other teams lose. But I don't want to play that Russian roulette yeah, game. Yeah, I don't blame you. I, I, if we beat Georgetown, my mindset is to win the Big East tournament. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the last time I coached in the Big East tournament, we won back to back. So that's my mindset. Um, now, we're going to have to play great basketball because we've got teams in there that are the best in the country. Mm -hmm. But we've played those teams the best in the country to one-point games and at the buzzer. Creighton games. You know, sure. I, I think everybody, this is New York, look, and I'm a New Yorker inside and out. But in New York, everybody, the last game you play or the last, last run you're on gets overblown positively and gets overblown negatively. So we lost 8 out of 10. Outside of Seton Hall, we were playing great basketball, playing great teams. Yeah. Did we blow some leads? Well, it's halftime. It, the game's not <laughs> finished at halftime. There's another half to be played, yeah. and you're on the road. So um, there are a couple bad games that we played, but we never panicked. Mm -hmm. We never said we lost 8 out of 10. No, we just said, let's get better today. Let's get better tomorrow. Let's get better in the next game. And now we're in the hunt. So for everybody that jumped, I can assure you, my ass was tied to the seat. I wasn't jumping anywhere. I love it. Hey, listen, St. John's fans, it's March. This guy's your coach. That's what you've been waiting for. Coach, great job, man. Thank you. Good luck this week. There he is. It's coach Patino, of course. Quick timeout. More of the Red Storm Report next, right here.